Hi, hello everyone. This is a uh, Dr. Samurai, a professor in Japan specializing in international social pathology. That means the social pathologies are uh, confirmed among multiple different countries. Anyway, uh, today's topic is Herbert Mullin. You're familiar with this name, right? And like I said before, in the first half, I would like to uh, provide you a general information about Mr. Herbert Mullin. And then in the latter half, I would like to talk about my personal relationship with Mr. Mullin. Okay? So let's start today. Okay? There was a uh, huge earthquake in San Francisco in 1906 though there was other one after that but uh, there was a big one in 1906 okay and uh, uh, Mr. Mullen was born on exactly the same date of that huge San Francisco earthquake so he somehow thought into this, uh, you know, uh, idiosyncratic idea that he has to do something to stop another huge earthquake from happening. And the answer he came up with was to kill people, to save the huge earthquake from happening as for the sacrifices okay and his murder case is considered to be typical disorganized serial murder which indicates there was no plan the person keeps killing people whom he meet accidentally on his way okay and uh, he admitted to uh, second degree murder and he also uh, had paranoid schizophrenia so because of that he is now in prison for life but starting 2025 2025 he can start attending the board meetings for parole okay and I would like to uh, provide you some more general information he was raised under very controlling parents both of them they are highly controlling and uh, also, right after he graduated from high school, one of his friends sort of uh, recommended to smoke marijuana and LSD. I think that LSD was bad one. But anyway, because of the effects by those hallucinating drugs, he was obsessed with uh, this hallucinately idea that I need human sacrifices to stop another huge earthquake coming, okay? Although, at the same time, Vietnam War was going on, it was gradually going down. So, he started to think he needs to create sacrifices on his own okay and uh, the his first victim was a kind of old homeless gentleman and uh, he, i think he was hitchhiking and uh, mr mullin kind of stopped for him and asked for help from the gentleman to look into uh, under the you know hood of his car 
because there was something wrong that's what he said okay while this kind of gentleman was looking into and uh, the you know uh, into the engine he suddenly hit his head with uh, whatever was uh, available you know at the situation and later he said he received this telepathy from this gentleman that please kill me and throw me away from the running car to save other people that's the hallucinately message he got from uh, this uh, homeless gentleman and then uh, the next target was 24 year old uh, college female student she was hitchhiking too you know in all days hitchhiking was so popular and she was in a hurry for an interview for her part-time job maybe or real job anyway what was unfortunate was the car who picked her up was mr mullins car and listen to this he killed this college female student killed and he opened up her stomach and took out all the internal organs and he dismembered her bodies and left all those pieces scattered around on the road which were not found for months can you believe this if this was not unfortunate what he is anyway the other 11 like i said 13 people in total were killed the other 11 were first shot then stabbed by knife and listen to this carefully this type of murder in which the perpetrator killed because of the illusion or auditory hallucination are called visionally type serial killer visionally okay they never prepare in advance of their crimes they go there and use the tools that he could pick up and use it okay and leave them as they were without even hiding it it could be a kitchen knife it could be a no word it could be a blunt weapon so they are called uh, disorganized serial killers by fbi uh, the perpetrators are uh, normally low in iq and this is important they tend to live very close to the murder site or their job site could be very close to their murder scene and it has been already 50 years since mr herbert mullen was in prison and now he is psychologically stable and is preparing very seriously for the first board meeting that happens in 2025 as i said uh i just like to add another information there are many uh, people who point out the death of one of his close friends in high school right after graduation was the trigger of his abnormal hallucinately murders but uh, when i actually talked to him he never talked about it at all instead he said because of that the uh, hallucinatory drugs which was uh, recommended against his will his disfigured ego made up by highly controlling 
parents words brought up to the level of pathology that he could not control anymore and it led to the level of paranoid schizophrenia so that's the reason why he think he led himself to doing such unbelievable atrocious acts of crimes mr mullin that i know is like when i uh, visited him you know we usually go through uh, x-ray kind of speculation of the you know uh, any kind of metals and uh, also drugs and uh, stuff like that that's a normal procedure we go through that and put everything out of our pockets then uh, we enter the visitor's room there's usually a desk like teacher's desk in a classroom okay in front of all the other desks okay there sits a uh, correctional officer in charge of the room okay we first go up to him and hand in our id normally like a driver's license or passport okay and uh, they indicate which desk we should sit and uh, we go to the uh, table okay i am a visitor uh, and uh, though herbert is not here yet okay inmates are supposed to sit facing that the main officer okay so we are supposed to sit with their back at the main officer that the main desk okay and the uh, inmates are supposed to face the officer was their hands always on the table so that uh, anything suspicious cannot happen right and uh, i was sitting there and as usual the person i was waiting for kind of a uh, came out almost the last out of the door you know he was uh, very thin the height was pretty much the same as me i'm five seven and he is like five eight or so but he was much thinner and uh, i asked him hey are you herbert and he kind of nodded without saying anything okay and we bought uh, certain snacks and stuff he was not uh, my normal teammates that i visit like I, most of them are hungry for hamburgers and pizzas and uh, coca-cola and so on but uh, he was not for eating so we kind of bought uh, you know simple snacks and potato chips and stuff you know started talking about uh, my way to the prison and the, the night before the day I met with him was terrible it, uh, it was like one of those scenes in the horror movies like uh, stormy nights the winds and and uh, huge branch of a tree you know uh, lay across the street I have never experienced that bad stormy nights but uh, good thing was uh, now we have this you know a very high quality cell phone and uh, uh, we use FaceTime you know we can always uh, be in touch with somebody else so it is it was like uh, we just to keep the cell phone you know the FaceTime on it's like a TV camera and I'm driving you know I was driving the car that I rented in a situation like a hell but still I felt like I was with somebody else but anyway I told him and he was gonna surprise but he knew because he was in the same area right the very next day when I woke up it was like a dream it was like one of those you know uh, uh, beautiful town scene in Edward Caesar's hands uh, you know you watch the movie you know by Johnny Depp everything was so beautiful 
you know everything was green and this uh, uh, brooks was kind of running and on each side is there are flowers and it was so shiny and where the dews on the on the leaves of the glasses and everything so the last night and this morning were like a totally different world which we kind of may see in movies both of them but anyway let's go back to the original topic okay when the time comes i normally try to uh, ask direct questions like uh, how come you uh, came to have to uh, do things like that you know one simple direct question about the incident he was famous for and what he said was like you know both of my parents mom and dad they were very controlling and uh, they tried to keep me as kid as possible does this make sense like like a good kid don't ever want them to grow up to be an adult person so i think uh, they the the parents had some kind of a uh, psychological complex of controlling others to be uh, normal themselves but anyway because of that he was trying his best to be a good boy you know? oh this is what he said he said the the parents also used some of his friends to uh, direct Herbert into the direction they want Herbert to be so parents and friends and you know all those uh, environment and he was uh, supposed to uh, go on the road that the parents laid out that was the only way he could go okay and uh, I also asked him what about the drugs because I knew he took some drugs uh, around the end of uh, uh, high school days I think and he goes it was the bad thing the drug was very bad I wish I had never taken them and I still am angry at the friend who uh, introduced me to to those hallucinatory drugs so I think parents pressure and the drug was very uh, scarring it was traumatizing by the way before he was involved in those murders incident he was voted number one for a man who the classmates believed to be most successful in the future so he was such an ideal good looking handsome boy popular with the girls but that he was acting to meet with the parents ideal but uh, you know hitting uh, you know uh, like 18 or 20 years old it gradually started to crumble down and he also took drugs and that started to change what it was okay i asked him he was a you know a person uh, i felt very easy to talk to he was only uh, completely sober and he answered me any questions that i asked him so i asked him now you know looking back what do you think about what happened what he said was i feel really sorry about what i did and to be honest i cannot even think about what i did and what happened because it is too painful for now me to think about so he is now completely different person he couldn't even think back about what he did it was so painful and totally against what he is now this is 
you know, uh, the point that we should think about when we decide whether this person has an ability to stand in trial or not, you know? He and the way he thinks about what happened completely changed when it happened the current moment, okay? In such case, he is able to stand in trial, okay? But uh, anyway, what I thought was standing out was, he said this, uh, listen to this very carefully, okay? Uh, I, I asked him, do, do your parents still visit you and stuff? It was like a, uh, more than 20 years after he committed the crime. And he goes, no, no more. For the first uh, several years, they did. But uh, his lawyer advised him to cut all the relationship with his parents, who are still into controlling Herbert. So he cut off all the relationship with his parents and he said that was the time when he started to be stabilized psychologically so it was very instructive to me who also does counseling in uh, in a prison in japan sometimes when parents were too uh, aggressive and could not stop invading into kids territory psychologically not to continue the relationship could sometimes work positively but i thought it was uh, very uh, instructive otherwise okay i uh, since i mentioned that i am doing this uh, volunteer counseling thing at the japanese prison i i'd like to mention that uh, drugs like in Japan, the most popular drug is uh, meth, okay, like a speed. But uh, I am very positive that those who had a negative childhood, like abused and neglected and bullied and so on, those who think they had a negative childhood, I think they should never take methamphetamine because I am sure that they are directed to uh, have bad trips and once they have their bad trips they would be pushed into the corner by which I mean like they always hear voices like die you are not deserve to live or kill the guy or stab the guy or punch the guy all those things you know they keep listening to the voices it's not their own voices but they keep hearing such negative voices okay and uh, as time goes by it's like this okay at the uh, uh, worst moment it goes up like this and uh, you know they could not even sleep and no sleep works more negatively in terms of having uh, uh, bad thoughts and bad voices. But anyway, the worst point, right? Cannot sleep and uh, hearing uh, bad voices, negative voices, negative orders, and die and kill and stab and so on. They gradually you know goes down because their body started to get very tired and cannot keep up that adrenaline that high it goes down physically you now in terms of the amount of the adrenaline and it goes down and then you know this uh, sort of downtime comes that uh, he doesn't want to do anything okay that's the time He's supposed to rest till he gradually start to feel doing something naturally so it goes up like this 
and it goes down like this and then gradually start with what he would like to do but uh, one thing I should not uh, leave out for you is the bad trip you once have will never go away period okay it could be less often but you still keep listening keep hearing all those negative voices one lady who spent uh, almost 10 years between uh, 30s and 40s in prison because of the abuse of uh, methamphetamine in Japan she is now no okay and she works uh, I, I forget exactly where but she she is on a uh, regular you know uh, job but uh, she still says when she is washing her hair in in the bathroom she feels like police is coming even 20 years after 20 years after she left the prison she still hears such voices though now she can control that as part of herself okay so death is no good okay let's get back to the original topic okay uh, we are talking about uh, mr. Herbert Mullen okay and uh, right now he is completely out of uh, drug effects he doesn't hear those voices anymore he wakes up very early in the morning and get up like 4 35 right and he said uh, he uh, uh, make uh, uh, hot water to make a uh, hot tea and uh, he put the you know cup of hot tea on it you know a small space and where sunshine comes down and he likes that the vapor you know he likes to see that the vapor goes up you know under the sunshine that's what he says he keeps reporting what kind of beautiful uh, natural phenomena happen uh, the, what i like about his letter is he always kind of a uh, encourages me by saying as soon as i received your letter this kind of wonderful things happens like say you know uh, flocks of like 10 birds were flying up north together and things like that so whenever he reports things like that when my letter arrives i feel like uh, i am a messenger of nature and the natural providences or whatever but anyway he's he shares the appreciation of nature and natural providence with me and uh, that's why we have been in we have been friends for uh, almost 10 years now on and off okay and the uh, thing is as I uh, mentioned in the first part of mr. Herbert his parole here is available in 2025 okay which is like uh, five years after coming so soon and he's seriously preparing for the parole board believing that he is now a completely changed person which I believe too but here's the thing the true reason why he did all those atrocious murders act was say his parents psychological abuse and drugs accidentally introduced by his friends for whatever reason it was he killed 13 people innocent didn't have anything to do with him 13 and all those 13 people cannot even see those flocks of birds flying or uh, squirrels teaching their kids how to catch worms and beautiful stars 
in the sky. Those 13 people, he deprived everything from them. And though uh, I don't never mention this to him directly, I wonder whether, you know, his release will be a good thing or not. You know, I've never said that before to him. But that's what I am uh, honestly thinking about in my heart. Because uh, maybe because I'm from Eastern country, which respects nature, it's like I to an eye. You know, we have these words that if you kill one person, you better be ready to be killed. Or if you dig one grave, you have you have to dig another for yourself okay that's deep down what uh, people in east believes that's the balance in and yang okay plus and minus and that's the balance and when we start to think about it he killed 13 people i think Indeed, he should have died. He should have been killed according to the laws of nature. But he is still alive and he's a nice person that I kept saying. Okay? But uh, thinking about all those innocent 13 people lost the chance of enjoying all those things that. Uh, Mr. Herbert is now enjoying. I sometimes wonder, even if he is completely recovered from pathological situation, I'm not sure whether he deserves to be released or not. That's my uh, true uh, feeling. But anyway, I would like to finish this minute lecture on Mr. Mullen by reading a uh, poem from Mr. Mullen. Finally, the spring has come to Mule Creek. Cold breeds brought spring wild flowers and sparrows and swallows and all those wild birds. They all come down on the field to find for the seeds for their foods. I am cordially happy to see all those birds family enjoying the together time. That's it. And I uh, would like to see you again and till next time please have a wonderful time. Okay? Bye bye.